Hey guys, Mr. B here, uh, and this is the Chapter 11 Chemical Reactions Review Video. All right, so we're going to be going through the Chapter 11 Review Guide and uh, looking at every single question. So hopefully this will help you to prepare yourself for the test. All right, start with number one. It says, identify which elements slash compounds are the reactants and which are the products, then balance each reaction. All right, so remember that um, reactants are written on the left side of the arrow and products are written on the right. So reactants are over here. Uh, so reactants are going to be H2 and O2. And um, the products are going to be, uh, in this case, is just one product. It's going to be H2O. Okay. Um, in terms of balancing, there are two hydrogens on the left, two on the right. That's balanced. Two oxygens on the left, only one on the right. So we're going to need to put a two there to balance out the oxygens. That's going to give us four hydrogens here. Over here, we only have two. So we need to rebalance that out by putting a two. Okay. So this is our balanced equation. All right, looking at letter B, the reactants are going to be, oh, the reactants are going to be the Ag2S and the Al, and the products are going to be the Al2S and the Ag, okay? So again, these are the reactants, and these are the products. In terms of balancing, um, let's see, we have two silvers on the left. We only have one on the right, so we're going to need to put a two there. And we have two aluminums here on the right side. We only have one on the left, so we're going to need to put a two in front of the aluminum as well. And then everything, I think, looks balanced. So, all right. And then letter C here, uh, the reactants are going to be the SO2 and the O2. And the products are going to be... Uh, in this case, there's only one product, and that is the SO3. Um, and then in terms of balancing, so let's see here. We have one sulfur on each side, so that's balanced, but we have four total auctions on the left. So we have two auctions here and two auctions there. That's four. And then we have three here. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit tricky to balance. Um, here's what I know. Whatever number that we decide to put in front of this, the same exact number is going to have to go here, okay? Because um, the sulfurs are going to have to be the same. So let's just try some guess and check. Let's just try two, okay? Right, uh, right now there's a one. Clearly that's not working, so let's just try two. So let's put a two there. That means we also have to then put a two there, okay? So our sulfurs are still balanced. Let's check our oxygens. Two times two, this is four, plus that two, that's six. And we have two times three, that's six. There we go, balanced out. No problem. All right, um, these ones here, number two, it says write a balanced chemical equation for the following reactions. Be sure to include physical states of each element slash compound. So you should label it with S, L, G, or A, Q, whether it's a solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous. All right, so we're basically just gonna be writing chemical equations from the word equations they're giving us here. All right, um, so it says aqueous calcium acetate reacts with aqueous sodium carbonate to produce solid calcium carbonate and aqueous sodium acetate. So um, we can start by writing a word equation just so we know what the reactants are, what the products are. Okay, I'm gonna do that just to make it a little bit easier. So we have calcium acetate and it's aqueous. So I'm just gonna put AQ just to, to show that it's aqueous. Uh, reacting with sodium carbonate, that is also aqueous, to produce, so we have our arrow, solid calcium carbonate, that's a solid, and uh, aqueous sodium acetate, okay? So here's our word equation, just so we can see kind of what the reaction is gonna look like. What are our reactants? What are our products? Then we need to write chemical formulas, okay? So calcium acetate is gonna be CaC2H3O2, O2, two, and that is aqueous. Okay, now again, if you're still struggling with writing chemical formulas at this point, right, you're doing your chapter 11 review guide and you still can't write chemical formulas, I would very highly recommend that you go either watch the chapter nine videos or reach out to me so we can work on it together. Because if you can't write a chemical a formula for this stuff, you're not gonna do well on the test, okay? So I'm not gonna walk through how to write chemical formulas here. I've done that in a lot of other videos. 
this we're just going to be writing chemical formulas so i hope that that doesn't confuse you and i apologize if you really want to understand how we write these but for right now i'm just going to keep on writing my chemical formulas so sodium carbonate is Na2CO3, that is aqueous. We have our arrow. Calcium carbonate is gonna be CaCO3, and that is a solid. And sodium acetate is gonna be NaC2H3O2, and that is aqueous, okay? So here's all of our chemical formulas. This one, we just have to balance it. So let's just start with the calcium. Here we have one calcium. Uh, on the left, we have one on the right. That's balanced. This whole chunk is acetate. So we're going to count that as a big chunk of stuff. You know what? Let's zoom in here. Okay. So we're going to count this as one chunk of stuff. There's our acetate. This here is only, I'm sorry, this, there's two, there's two of them here. Okay. There's two acetates here. We only have one. So we need to put a two in front of this. Let's just do it in black. Okay. So you need to put a two there. That'll give us two acetates. That will also now give us two sodiums. But on the left, we already had two sodiums. So that's balanced out. And then the carbonate, we have one carbonate. Okay, one CO3 ion. And here we have one CO3 ion as well. So in terms of balancing, we just need to have a two there. All right, there we go. Move on to the next one. Solid iron reacts with oxygen gas and water to form solid iron three hydroxide. So again, I'm gonna write out the word equation kind of structure everything out, then I'll write up my formulas. So I have iron, which is a solid, reacting with oxygen, which is a gas, and water, which is a liquid. Okay, now it doesn't say that, but most of you probably know that water is a liquid. So, and we're forming um, iron three hydroxide solid. Okay, so there's my word equation. Everything's written out, just kind of structured, and here we're gonna write our formulas. So iron is just Fe, okay? It's not bonded with anything, so it doesn't have any charges. Just Fe and it's a solid. Oxygen is O2, okay? Remember that it is a Brinkelhoff. So if you don't remember Brinkelhoffs, I've mentioned that in other videos too in this chapter, so go rewatch those ones. But remember there are seven elements that are diatomic. Oxygen is one of them. And then we have water, which is H2O. That is a liquid. And then iron three hydroxide is gonna have a chemical formula that looks something like this. Okay, FeOH3, and it's a solid. All right, so from here, we just need to check our balancing. Um, the irons are good. We have one and one. Oxygens, we have one, two, plus this one, that's three. And here we have three times one, that's three. Those are balanced. But the hydrogens are not. Here we have two. Here we have three. All right, so um, let's think about maybe the first number that two and three both multiply into, which would be six. So let's balance this maybe by putting a two here to give us six hydrogens. And you know what, let's, let's make a list because otherwise this might, be, uh, this might be too confusing. So let's just make a list to make it easier. Okay, so we had one Fe, we had three Os, and we have two Hs. And on the right, uh, we had one iron, three Os, and three H's, okay? So if we put a two here, that's gonna multiply our H's, two times three, that gives us six. So this now is gonna be six. The oxygens are also now gonna be six because it's three times two, and the irons are now gonna be two. All right, so now we have to rebalance, or uh, we guess we're gonna we have to rebalance everything. So on the left here, we're gonna put a two in front of the iron there. So that'll give us two irons. Um, Oxygen wise, we have a six here, so we need to put a three there. Actually, um, let's actually leave this on for alone for a second. Let's look at the hydrogens. Here we need to put a three. That'll give us six hydrogens, okay? And then if we look at our total oxygens, we have two here, and then three times one, that's three. So three here plus two there, that's a total of five. All right, so our iron's balanced and our hydrogen's balanced, but our oxygen's are not balancing. So um, what we could do, uh, you know what, no. So we have to obviously still balance this. This, this isn't balanced yet. Um, clearly two is not gonna work there, okay? So at this point, <clears throat> I would start trying some guessing checking. Um, two didn't work, let's just try three, right? Let's see what three does. 
So that changes our irons to three. That changes our um, hydrogens to nine. Changes our oxygens to nine. Um, so over here, this iron is gonna have to be a three to change that to a three. Um, and then as for this, for the hydrogens, we have two hydrogens and there's, there's no whole number we can multiply two by to make it a nine, right? We have to have nine and we can't get nine. So I gotta tell you, three is not gonna work. Let's try four, let's go to the next one, right? Let's try four. So that changes this iron to four. Uh, our, our hydrogens are three times four, that's 12. <clears throat> Oxygens are three times four, that's 12. Over on the left, this iron here is gonna need to be a four. Um, for hydrogen, we have two here. We need this to be um, a 12, so we need to put a six. Six times two, that gives us 12. And then for oxygens, we've got six here plus these two there. That's so far a total of eight. Um, so those are not balanced yet, but let's think about this. So we have two oxygens here, so two O's, plus the six O's here, and this needs to be equal to 12. Now right now it's equal to eight. However, we can put a number in front of this one and that will not change anything else. It'll only change the oxygen. So if we think of it as two, let's get rid of the O's. If we think of it as two times X plus six equals 12, what number needs to be X, right? So this, this here needs to be six, right? Six plus six equals 12. So two times three will give us six, which will give us a 12. So we need to put a three there. So we have six oxygens here plus the six oxygens here will give us 12, okay? And at that point, everything should be balanced. You can double check real quick, but I'm pretty sure that looks good. And, uh, and these are the lowest whole numbers we can get. We can't divide a common number out from all those, so looks good. All right, number four, solid mercury two oxide. So um, solid mercury two oxide is heated in a test tube to produce liquid mercury metal and oxygen gas. So again, let's write out our word equation. So solid mercury oxide. Um, it's heated in a test tube to produce. So there's only one reactant. It's gonna produce mercury liquid and oxygen gas. Okay, so this is uh, this is all of our stuff here. So let's write our formulas. Mercury two oxide is gonna look like this, Mg, Mg, or HgO, and it's, an, it's a solid. And then we have mercury, which is just Hg, plus oxygen, which is O2, because it's a Brinkelhoff, and there we go. Uh, this is gonna be a decomposition reaction. In terms of balancing, um, we'll need to have a two in front of this to get the oxygens to be two. And then by doing that, we're also gonna have to have a two then in front of the mercury there to balance that out, okay? So that is our balanced reaction. All right, moving on, number five, it says copper metal is placed in a beaker of silver nitrate. Two possible reactions occur. Reaction one, silver metal and aqueous copper two nitrate are produced. Or reaction two, silver metal and aqueous copper one nitrate are produced. Write equations for both reactions. All right, so we're gonna write out our equations here for both of these, and let's just shift this down. Um, that way it looks nice. So, all right, so let's go reaction one. Um, so it says copper metal is placed in a beaker of silver nitrate, and this is actually should be a beaker of aqueous silver nitrate. So we have copper, Metal, if it's metal, it's gonna be a solid, plus um, silver nitrate aqueous. And in reaction one, we're gonna have silver metal, so solid, plus copper two nitrate aqueous. Okay, so there's reaction one. Reaction two is going to be um, the same beginning, so copper solid plus silver nitrate aqueous. Uh, and now we're gonna have copper one nitrate rather than copper two nitrate, okay? So those are our two reactions written in words. Let's write out some chemical formulas for them instead. So copper is Cu, and it's a solid, plus silver nitrate is AgNO3, 
That is aqueous. Um, silver metal by itself. So this is going to be single replacement. Um, silver is just AG by itself as a solid. Plus copper two nitrate is going to look like this. Okay, so that's copper two nitrate. Um, copper one nitrate. So we're going to just copy this actually and just paste it. So it's going to look very similar, but the only thing that's going to change is this part. Okay, this part is going to be copper one nitrate instead of copper two nitrate. So to change the formula, we're just going to get rid of the two outside the parentheses, and this is our copper one nitrate. Okay, so these are two reactions. They're they're very similar, obviously. The only difference is that the product here, the chemical formula, is just slightly different. All right, it says number six, identify the type of each reaction as combination, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, or combustion. If it is more than one, state which types it is. Okay, so um, we're just gonna be looking at what we have and trying to determine what type of reaction we have. So the first one, we have um, CuS plus O2, and we get Cu plus SO2. This looks like a typical single replacement. Our oxygen, uh, our, our oxygen is going to be replacing the uh, copper so that we have sulfur and oxygen bonded up in the products and coppers by itself. So single replacement. Um, letter B, um, this one is gonna be a decomposition reaction. We have one reactant and it's breaking apart into multiple products. That is the, uh, the key indicator there for decomposition. Uh, letter C, we have Fe plus Cl2, we're making FeCl. That is going to be a combination reaction. Okay, we have two reactants combining to make one product. Um, letter D, this looks like another, uh, this looks like another single replacement reaction. We have hydrogen replacing the iron. So that iron is by itself in our products and the oxygen and the hydrogen are bonded together. This looks like single replacement. And then as for the last one, we have FeCl3, NaOH. Looks like the Fe and the Na are swapping so that the Fe is bonded with the OH in the product and Na is bonded with Cl in a product. So this is a classic double, oh, should be red, double replacement reaction for this one. All right, um, number seven, it says, Finish the following chemical reactions by predicting the products produced along with their physical state, balancing the equation, then state what reaction type it is. Okay, so we have to finish the reactions. They're telling us the beginning part. We gotta do the end. All right, so let's write it in words if we need to. So we have uh, magnesium, magnesium metal, so that's a solid. Placed in a beaker of aqueous mercury to Nitrate. All right, we have to figure out what, what is this going to be. So let's maybe write the formulas out because it might make it a little bit easier for us to, uh, to notice what this is going to be. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. Um, this looks like a typical single replacement. We have an element by itself. It's probably going to replace the mercury. So most likely what would happen is that we will have mercury by itself. Um, and mercury is a liquid, by the way, when it, it is um, by itself. And I think in the previous problem up here, we had a mercury one and it mentioned right here, mercury liquid. So mercury is gonna be a liquid, okay? And then um, our other product is gonna be magnesium with the nitrate. So it's gonna be Mg NO3-2, NO3-2. Okay. Now as to what this is going to be, we're going to check some stuff here. Because remember, we have to do, um, we've got to do some stuff with our periodic table in order to determine whether these reactions are going to happen. So we are going to look at our periodic table first and try to see if um, this reaction will take place. Now this is a single replacement. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look on our periodic table on the back. And we are going to look at this top left part. Okay, this is the uh, activity series. So on here, we need to see if magnesium is higher on the list than mercury. Okay, so remember that in single replacement reactions, the element that is by itself needs to be higher on the list than the element that's in the compound. In this case, it is. So this reaction is going to happen. All right, so we can go back to our sheet 
and we know that this reaction is going to happen. So everything you've written out is good so far. Um, now we're going to check whether this is a solid or if it's aqueous. And to do that, we're going to look at our solubility table. So the compound we have was magnesium nitrate. So we have magnesium nitrate. Okay. And if we check that, we will see that this is aqueous. All right, so we can go back to our uh, sheet here and we'll mark this as AQ for aqueous. Um, and usually again, um, as long as we make something that's not aqueous, we have a reaction, okay? So this is a single replacement reaction. This is our, uh, our formula, or this is our whole thing here. And then we just have to balance it. Um, and looking at it, we have one magnesium on the left, one magnesium on the right, one mercury on the left, one mercury on the right, two nitrates on the left, two on the right, everything's balanced up. All right, so we gotta do. Okay, moving on to the next one here, number eight. Um, it says a mixture of aqueous potassium sulfate and aqueous lead to nitrate are placed in a beaker. All right, so we have potassium sulfate, aqueous, and we have lead to nitrate, aqueous. Okay, so it's gonna look something like this. So again, let's write out our chemical formulas and lead to nitrate and it looks something like this. All right, so looking at this, what reaction type does this look like? Looks very close to a double replacement. So most likely the K and the PB are going to swap with each other. So our products, we will have KNO3 and we will have PBSO4. All right, so if it's double replacement, that means that we're going to need to look on the back of our periodic table at some solubility stuff um, to make sure that we make a solid. So um, the first one we had was potassium nitrate. Okay, that's KNO3. So potassium nitrate, KNO3, that is aqueous. All right, so this first product is aqueous. The second one we have here is lead to sulfate. So let's go take a look at lead to sulfate, see if that one is a solid. So we have lead to sulfate and that is a solid. So that is perfect. One of these two needs to be a solid. If neither of them are a solid, we will have no reaction take place. So this is a solid, beautiful. So there we go. Then we just need to do some balancing. Uh, on the left, we have two potassiums. On the right, we only have one. So let's put a two there. I'll do it in black so it stands out a bit. Okay, let's put a two there. Um, sulfate, we have one SO4, we have one SO4, uh, we have one lead, we have one lead, and here we have two nitrates, and here we have two times those, that's two nitrates. There we go, everything is balanced out. Here is our final answer. All right, taking a look at number nine. Now they're just giving us the formulas right off the bat, so we don't need to, um, to write them out. Cool, all right, so again, looking at this, what reaction type does it look like? Looks very similar to the previous one we just did where we had a double replacement. So in this case, we have NH4, that's a polyatomic ion, ammonia. Probably gonna swap with the copper. So let's write out our products here real quickly. So we're gonna have NH4. Uh, that is not the font that I like, there we go. NH4, um, bonding up with the acetate ion. So C2H3O2. And then we'll have copper two chloride. Okay, so those are our two products. Let's go check some solubility. So we have ammonium acetate and copper two chloride. So let's take a look here real quick. So um, just erase that. All right, so ammonium acetate is ammonium acetate. That's a solid, or I'm sorry, that's aqueous. So that one is not going to make a solid, AQ. The other one is copper two chloride. So let's go take a look at that one. So copper two and chloride is here and that is aqueous as well. All right, so we have two aqueous products, which means if this is aqueous too, then this whole thing doesn't even happen. We're just going to cross it off and just simply write, oh, let's uh, unstrike through, no reaction. Okay, and that's it, all right. Moving on then, last one um, for this problem set before we go on to the last ones. Um, we have ZnCl2, Na2Cl3. Looking at this, again, what reaction type does it look like? Probably gonna be double replacement. 
So we're going to have um, zinc. Yeah, why does it keep changing my font? I don't like that. Zinc carbonate. And we'll have sodium chloride. All right, so these are going to be our two products. Let's go check some solubilities to see if either one will be a solid. So we have zinc carbonate and sodium chloride. So let's go check. Let's see here. So zinc and carbonate is here. All right, that says solid. So that is good. So one of these ones is a solid. So zinc carbonate is solid. It's very likely then that NaCl is aqueous, but let's just double check real quick just to make sure. So we have sodium and chloride, and that is a uh, that is aqueous. Sorry, that is not a solid. That is aqueous. All right. So this one is going to be aqueous. All right. So we do have a solid. Um, so there we go. Now we just need to balance it out. Um, and looking at it, we have uh, one zinc on each side, so that's good. We have two chlorines, however, on the reactant side and only one on the product side. So let's put a two here to balance that out. That will give us two sodiums, which will also balance out the two sodiums you already had. And the carbonates, we have one here and one there. So balancing wise, we just need to put a two there and that's it. Okay, last three problems, 11, 12, and 13. These ones might take a little bit, but we'll try to go through them pretty quick. So these ones, we're gonna be finishing the reaction like we were just doing. Um, they're all gonna be double replacement, it looks like, and we are going to be writing also complete ionic and net ionic equations. So um, here we go. Uh, double replacement, which means that the Na and the NO3 are gonna bond with each other, and the Ba and the SO4 are gonna bond with each other. So there's our two products. Let's go check to make sure one of these is going to be um, a solid. So we have NaNO3 and BaSO4. So sodium nitrate, barium sulfate. Let's see here. Sodium and nitrate. Okay, that is not a solid. And we have barium and sulfate. That one is a solid. All right, so we do have a solid, which is good. So we will have a reaction take place. So this one is aqueous, this one is a solid. All right, so from here to write our complete ionic equation, anything that is aqueous, we're gonna write as separate ions. Um, oh, sorry, we didn't balance it. We need to balance it first. We cannot forget to do that. Um, it looks like we have two sodiums on the left, one on the right, we need to put a two there. And on the left, we have um, two nitrates here to balance out the two nitrates that we have here and barium we have one, and here we have one, and sulfate we have one, and there we have one. All right, so we just need a two to balance out right there. All right, so complete ionic equation, anything that is aqueous, we're gonna write as separate ions. So we'll have, keep clicking things on accident, um, two Na pluses that are aqueous, plus um, SO4, two minus, that is aqueous, plus, Ba2 plus, that is aqueous, plus 2 NO3, NO3 minus ions that are aqueous. Okay, so that's everything on our reactant side. Product side, um, the 2 NaNO3 is aqueous, so that is going to be written as separate ions. And the BaSO4 is a solid, so that will stay as a solid. All right, so here's our complete ionic equation. Let's copy this, let's paste it down here, and then we're gonna find our spectators and get rid of them. So it looks like our spectators are going to be, we have two Na plus on each side, okay? So that's gonna be gone, so let's erase that. So two Na plus and two Na plus, so that's gone. And then we also have two NO3 minus and two NO3 minus. So those are gonna be gone as well. And that leaves just that. Uh, and if we want to, we can put the positive thing first and the negative thing second, um, if you wanna format it that way. Otherwise, if you don't, it's fine as it is. So, all right, there is our net ionic equation. Okay, there we go. All right, number 12, um, balance this, or we're gonna finish this one off. So this is gonna be another double replacement reaction. We are gonna have um, KCl, my font changed again, K. Okay. Cl plus ZnS. All right, um, let's go see if um, these are gonna be a solid at all. So 
We have potassium chloride and zinc sulfide. So let's go check. So potassium chloride is here, potassium uh, chloride, okay, that is aqueous. And then we had zinc and so, uh, not that one, uh, sulfide is the one next to it, sulfide, there we go. And that is a solid, all right, cool. So we have one solid, that's good. So this first one is aqueous and this one is a solid, all right. Um, so looking at balancing, um, we have two potassiums on the left and only one on the right. So we're gonna need to put a two in front of that. That will also then give us two chlorines here, but that balances with the two chlorines that are right there. And then the zinc and the sulfurs are already balanced out, all right? So let's write our complete ionic equation. Again, anything that is aqueous will be written separately as ions. So it's gonna look something like this so far. Oh, and we have two of them. And then uh, the two KCL on the product side is aqueous. So that's gonna stay uh, written as separate ions. And then the uh, ZNS will remain as a solid and written as a solid. Okay, so there's everything written out. Let's copy paste it. And then let's remove any spectators. Um, we have 2K plus on both sides. So that can be uh, deleted. And we have uh, 2Cl minus on both sides as well. So that can be deleted as well. So let's delete that and delete that. And uh, this is what we're left with. And again, if you want to write the positive thing first and just reformat it a little bit, you certainly can. I'm going to. Okay. And it should look something like that. That is our net ionic equation. All right. Last one here. Um, another double replacement. So we have lead nitrate, lead 2 nitrate, and lithium sulfate. So we're going to have lead 2, so PB, uh, bonded with SO4 plus lithium bonded with nitrate. So those are our two chemical formulas. Let's go check some solubility. So we have lead 2 sulfate and lithium nitrate. So let's find these real quick on our solubility chart. So lead 2, what was it again? Let me just double check. Uh, lead 2 sulfate and lithium nitrate. Okay, so lead 2 sulfate. So lead 2 sulfate. And this is solid, that's good. And then lithium and nitrate is here. And that one is aqueous. All right, so we do have a solid, that is, that is good. That means that the reaction is gonna happen. Um, of the two, the lead to sulfate is the solid and the lithium nitrate is aqueous. Okay, um, now we need to balance. So um, leads, those are balanced out. The nitrates, we have two of them here. Here we only have one, so we're gonna need to put a two there. Um, that will give us two lithiums, but that balances out with the two lithiums you already had. And then for the SO4, we have one SO4, and here we have one SO4. So those are all balanced. There's our balanced equation. Let's write out our complete ionic equation. So the, uh, the lead two ions are aqueous, and those are bonded with two. NO3 ions, which are also aqueous. And then we have two lithium ions, which are aqueous, and bonded with a sulfate ion, which is aqueous. Okay, so here are our reactants. On the product side, the PBSO4 is going to stay as a, uh, as a solid, so that's not gonna be written separately. But the two LiNO3 is going to be written out. Um, as separate ions because that is still aqueous. So, all right, so here is our complete ionic equation. Everything should be balanced out. Let's copy paste this down to our net ionic equation. Let's find the spectators, get rid of them, and that is it. So um, it looks like we have two NO3s on the left and two NO3s on the right, so those can be deleted. So delete those. 
And we also have two Li pluses on the left and two Li pluses on the right. So those can be deleted as well. And when we're done, this is all we have left. So Pb2 plus plus SO4 two minus makes Pb SO4. All right, that is the last problem there. Hopefully that helps you. Um, and if not, again, I'm always available to help out, you know, go over things one-on-one -on -one with you in a Google meeting or whenever, okay? So please reach out to me. Again, I cannot stress enough. Make sure that you know how to write chemical formulas for ionic compounds. You know how to find all these charges. If you don't, if you're still struggling at this point right now when you're taking your chapter 11 review guide, you're doing that and you're still struggling on this, you need help, okay? Do not take your chapter 11 test until you are ready and you understand how these formulas work. All right, that's it for this video. That's it for the chapter. All you have left is your test. So, all right, guys, that's it. Good luck with your test, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.